Hi, I'm Christy Friesen, and thank you so much for joining me here at Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio. We're playing with beads and polymer clay today, and that is my favorite combination. You know I love polymer clay. It's something I've been playing with for years, but what makes it so much fun is being able to stick beads and stones in it, and that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna make something I like to call rock and roll, because we use rock, and we just take the clay and we roll with it. This is sort of the finished product over here, as you can see. It's a fairly large cabochon, although you don't have to use one that large, and it's encased with clay, and it's got other little beady bits all over it. Right here, we have a whole bunch of different cabochons. Just so you can see that shape doesn't matter, size doesn't matter, we love them all, all the cabochons of the world. As long as they're made out of glass, or stone, or fossil, or crystal, or porcelain, or metal, it's all good because they have to go in the oven. So you want something that will hold up to that. You don't want something made out of lucite or acrylic or other meltable materials unless you're going for a Salvador Dali look and then that's all on you. Okay, so what we're gonna do is play with our polymer clay. If you haven't played with polymer clay before, there is a basic polymer clay video right here on firemountaingems.com and I'll walk you through all the steps. So go take a look at that if you haven't already and then meet me back here and we'll put a little cabochon with some clay on it and call it our own. Okay, so the first thing I did when you weren't looking is I mixed a color. That's a very simple thing in polymer clay. For this particular piece, I looked at my stone, I tried to figure out some colors that would look good with it. I chose a green, a white, and a navy blue and mixed them all together. You can do this by hand. You can use some of those little quickie tricks that I showed you about in other videos, or you can run it through your clay conditioning machine to make a sheet of color, and you get something fun like this. This is just a nifty little blend that I thought looked good with the stone. And it's, it's pretty thick. It's about a thick of, thickness of a quarter or so, which is usually the largest setting on your clay conditioning machine. So all you do to start with is take your little sheet here and you plop your cabochon, bam, right down on it. It's that simple. You're done. Ha ha. No, just kidding. Okay, so what you have to do next is take one of your tools and cut this out. Normally I would take a needle tool and I'm just going to go like this all the way around. But because of the surface here, I don't want to leave a big old mark on there because that'll look dorky for the whole rest of this video. So I'm going to move this baby out of the way. And we'll go to one I did already when you weren't looking. So here's what it looks like when I've cut this clay all out and it's just roughly around there. You've noticed it's not perfect. I've got a little bit more on this side than this side because I'm an asymmetrical person. I like that. If you like perfection, you can feel free to do it perfect. But one of the things that polymer clay does really well is sort of an organic, asymmetrically balanced look. So feel free to be a little out of kilter. It all works. So then what I've done with this little clay uh, backing here is I've just used my fingers, and that is your best tool, to kind of pinch and press. Fingerprints are your friends. You do not have to worry about polishing this up to a high gloss. That is something you can do in polymer clay, but ain't something we're doing today, that's for sure, because we want those fingerprints. We want that organic texture. I am just tucking this clay all around my cabochon just because it looks good, and it kind of helps hold it in there. But I'm not going to go around the whole thing, because then it would look like a piece of stone with clay tucked all around it, and we want it a little bit more interesting than that. So I've tucked it partially. Now I'm going to get a little fancy with it. This is where we get into the roll situation. I've got more of that same clay, how convenient, and all you do is pinch off a little bit and roll it out. I usually start off with a sort of snake look, and that is just like a roll in your hand, and I've kind of pressed it side to side to make this sort of sluggy snake thing. And then that can just kind of tuck around here and create a nice little bezel to hold this together. I'm going to tuck a little bit more of it here. So see how I've got like a little snake coming up here? And you can keep going to make that as covered or not covered as you like. You can even make some of this clay just sitting right on the top of the stone. As long as clay is touching clay, see how these two clays are connected together? Then that works really well. So I'm going to pick this up and play with it a little bit here. I find it a little easier to work when I'm holding the piece in my hands than when it's flat on the table. That's just me, but you certainly can do it either way, whatever works for you. So I'm just taking another little snake. This is very free form. So feel free to experiment and kind of play around with what looks good to you. The whole idea that you're going for here is that this stone is grabbed and held by your clay so that it won't fall out. We're trying not to glue things in or hold them in, although you certainly can. The whole trick of this particular project is to let the clay hold it in there. So you notice now I can't pull this out and there's not enough here to yank it out here, so we're good. But I want some little decorative balls of clay. That gives me a place to add um, some beads, which is what we're gonna do next. 
There again is no real rhyme and reason. You just need to put them where it looks good. And if you're not sure, try a couple things and you'll be able to look at it and go, oh, I love it, but I don't know why, or I don't like it and I'm not sure why. So then look at it a little bit, go walk away, come back, look at it again. I'm just putting four little bobs of clay there. And because four is not the same as five, usually on most things, if you have an uneven number, it's a little bit more balanced. I'm gonna put the fifth one on there. And if you weren't sure what it, if it looked good or not, and you walked away, had a little ice cream, came back, then you should be able to look at it and see, oh wait, that piece needs to go this way, or that looks kind of crazy. My little trick on many things is to turn it all different directions. If it looks balanced from all directions, then you're going good. Sometimes when you look at it, you go, oh, that's how it should be. This should be the straight up and down spot. And I don't know why, sometimes it just looks right. So now what you've got is you've got your cabochon. It's enclosed by your little clay business. Let's add some of our beads. There's a couple of ways to add beads. You don't want to just stick a bead in there and hope for the best because once this clay hardens in the oven, and polymer is an oven curing clay, it does fuse in the oven, it's not an air dry clay, but once it hardens, then all those little glassy bits that you put into the plastic are gonna pop out. Usually when you're dancing or hugging people and all things are falling off of it, that's just not cool. So let's make sure they're attached well. There's two ways to do that. The first way is with a head pin. And what you see here is I've got a nice little ball tipped head pin and a nice little appetite bead. Um, I like appetites. I always have an appetite for chocolate. Ha! Huh? And I'm going to trim off the end and just put a little hook in it. Put a hook in it. The reason why you put a little hook in that is because that little hook goes into your clay and the clay hardens around it and then it can't be pulled out. That's one way to attach a bead. The other way is you're going to use a little bit of 28 gauge wire string your bead on that wire and use your wire cutters and your pliers to twist that up. Pliers will hold it while you twist, wire cutter will be there for you to trim the ends off. And if you make this go flying later on, you will find it in your bare feet. So try to hang on to it, throw it away later and bend a little hook on the end. And what I always recommend whenever you're gonna put a lot of beads in here is I do something like this. I get a little dish out, I pick from my bead stash, things that I think might look nice with the colors that I've chosen. I may not use all of them, but they're there, they're tempting. And then the other thing that I always find really good is go find a minion who would put them all on the little wires and the head pins, because that saves you a whole lot of time if somebody else is doing all the boring stuff. Which I found one, and look it, they wired up all this good stuff for me. So now it's a very simple matter of looking over your whole piece and deciding which ones of these little bits and pieces look good where. So let me move this down a little bit closer so you can see it. Here's one of my little pieces here. It's got a couple of fun little beads on there. I'm just gonna press it straight in, push it with my hand so that it embeds. If you run into rock, because there's a rock in the middle, you can kind of adjust it a little bit or maybe add a little bit more clay on there if you need to. And you don't have to put something in each one of those little dot areas that we did, but that sure looks super good, so why not? So I'm gonna put a few here and there. You get the idea. We're just gonna start adding interesting bits of bead, crystal, stone, that will make our design really come alive. Now let's put one more in there just for funsies. Uh, I'm using a lot of natural pearls as well, as well. Natural pearls are terrific. They go in the oven fantastically and they look terrific in all of your clay projects. Okay, so there's what we've got so far. Now there's a couple more things that you can do. Once you've got in as many beads as you want, and you know, I might go crazy and add tons more beads, but for now, it looks good. You're gonna look over the whole thing, maybe make any adjustments, if there's any angles that look odd. You can also start adding a little bit of texture if, at this point if you want. If you have a nice tool to work with, any kind of sculpting tool, you might decide to come in and just do a couple of little lines in case that's what it needs. Maybe here it needed a couple of little lines just to add something fun. All right, so whatever designs you decide to add there. And you may also want to put mica powder on it because mica powder is a whole nother fun thing. All mica powder is, and we've got some here, is ground up mica with pigments added and it lets shimmer and shine happen. I'm just taking the lid here so I don't have the whole big giant jar, which I will knock over and then that's a different project altogether. But I'm picking up a little with a very micro paintbrush. These are wonderful to have. And I'm just gonna kinda add a little bit of sparkle in a few choice locations to make sure it looks just super keen fun. So maybe I'll do a couple there and a little bit here or there. And there's a lot of different colors to mica, so you can add as many of the mica colors as you wish. Mica powder goes on to wet clay, raw clay. It doesn't really go on very well once it's baked, so do all of your fancy shiny business right now. Now's the time. And if you forget, well then, 
you'll just have to make another one and put it on there. The last thing is how in the world are you going to wear this? So once you've got all your shimmers on, your, your beads on, you've got everything the way you like it, how are you going to wear this? If you're going to wear a pin or a brooch, simple matter is after it's baked, you can glue or sandwich with some fresh clay a, a pin backing, one of those uh, hinged straight pins that works fantastic. You could do the same thing with a bail. Uh, any of those things work. Or you can make some little hanging hooks right now and add them to the back. And I'm going to show you how to do that because it's really smart and it's nice when everything can be incorporated into the whole piece before it's baked. Just makes it stronger and more sturdy. So what I've got here is a little bit of 20 gauge wire. That's the wire I use all the time whenever I'm doing some kinds of hooks or, or technical bits like that. And I'm just going to bend a hook in the end. We already know why we're bending a hook. Keep it in there. Then I'm just going to come and hold it and bend it over my finger. That makes a really nice sort of a shepherd's crook kind of look there. And that's all you need. And you do not have to put a bend on the other side. Now if you want to, you can, but you don't have to. I usually just trim that other side off. And it's okay if it's just a little longer. So here's what we've got. We've got just this little shepherd's hook and a little longer on that side. And I can pierce it right in if there's room, but a lot of times there's not because there's not a lot of clay back there. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take some of my clay, make a little ball of clay, flatten it with your fingers, about as flat as a dime or so. Then I can lay that little hook right in there. If you have liquid clay, and that's just a super saturated clear clay, any of the clay brands that are your favorite uh, will have a liquid clay product. I'm using Primo clay at the moment. There are other clays out there. All of them will do this project very well. Primo is a great sculpting clay. So if you haven't tried Primo, I suggest you do so for this project. You're going to love the results. And then I'm just going to take this and tuck it on the back side. And usually I put it, place it back there, and then I press it from the front. Because you, you know, turn it over in your hand and you're pounding it on and then, oh, I've ruined the front, so that's dumb. So just stick it back there and push it on and I can put another one on the other side. Now I'm ready to add ribbon, add chain, add whatever fun stuff I want once it's baked. All right, so baking, that's simple and easy. Baking is just a way of making all of that clay harden and obviously locking in your beads and all the other business uh, permanently into the clay. And you're going to use a regular home oven, electric, convection, gas oven. Just don't use a microwave because it's precise temperature. The temperature is on your clay, so just follow those instructions. And for a piece like this, you're going to put it in for about a half an hour. So you preheat your oven, put it in on a piece of paper, a pan, or a tile for about a half an hour, then let it cool down, and it will be ready to rock and roll. So if you enjoyed this project, I have a lot of other books with other projects in there, and you might enjoy any of these books, uh, then you can get them right here at FireMountainGems.com. There are other polymer artists out there with great books. There's tutorials. There's all kinds of fun things that you can find on polymer. And when you are ready to do all this fun stuff, do not forget that Fire Mountain Gems has like some of the nicest cabochons out there. There's so many to choose from. So don't forget that. Come here for cabochons, other little beady bits, polymer clay, tools, books, the whole shebang. It's right here, as well as other videos. So thank you so much for being here with me. I hope I gave you some inspiration to go out there and have some rock and roll fun here at Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio. I'll see you online. Maybe I'll catch you on Pinterest. Fire Mountain has a Pinterest page. They've got a Facebook page. Go in there, tell people what you're doing and where you saw it and how much fun you're having with clay. So see you back here at FireMountainGems.com.